फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर डूइंग दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस टू सेलिब्रेट द थर्टी एंड दर्टी सो फ्रॉम फोर पी एम टिल अबाउट फोर फिफ्टीन पी एम टू अबाउट फाइव फोर्टी फाइव पी एम सिक्स पी एम वी विल बी अनाउंसिंग आर थर्टी एंड बी डब्ल्यू लीगल वर्ल्ड थर्टी एंड दर्टी विनर्स श्री ऋतुराज अवस्थी जी हुज दी चेयरमैन ऑफ द लॉ कमीशन विल बी आर चीफ गेस्ट मिस चतुर्वेदी इज आर गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर and uh there is an eminent panel that will join so this conference is being done to be able to contextualize uh what these young people need to hear about the environment the topic that we are moderating that i'm moderating now is how do you build the legal department in house for the future what what are the characteristic of a futuristic in house legal department uh again as i said this is a very high powered panel uh, we are very accomplished people but let me for the sake of contextualizing give you their names again so that you they you know all of them um but i am and everyone except one is joining uh, physically uh, so so we have uh, mr anup kapoor who is the director of legal services for ford india he is joining us virtually and can we have anubhav um, we have mr hemant kumar who is the group general counsel of lnd we have ms priyanka walisha who is the head legal of yum digital and technology uh, mr sanjay gulati who is the evp and group head corporate tax gst mergers and acquisitions and litigation of the gmr group and we have mr sumit singh who is the general counsel and head corporate affairs and corporate strategy at bharat pay we couldn't have had a better panel let me start by asking uh, uh let me ask heman ji first heman ji uh, if the business world is changing the legal world has to keep up pace if the businesses are being transformed by the founders and ceos in your case the lnt business which is a traditionally infrastructure business has become a very large services play with uh, two of your entities becoming among the top 6 entities in the it services play and your chairman has said that it wants to be a services play going forward now if your business is changing how does how does the legal department keep up pace uh, and what are you doing to build a department which is futuristic what is the change in your mindset when you're hiring new people what are you looking at in those people has something changed or it is just an academic topic that we've taken for today's discussion hemant ji uh let me suggest two three things keeping in mind my 39 years of experience as a gc uh there is no straight answer to this subject it depends on the size of the business nature of the business and if i am the group general counsel while recruiting any young general uh, young in house uh, lawyer or legal guy uh i'll see that what are the business i need to address so i cannot expect from a, a in house counsel or lawyer that he can address my all legal issues so his specialization is important what i have been doing for the last 3 decade is that wherever i worked that i feel that the in house counsel or department or corporate legal department may be divided into two group one is litigation and one is non litigation area so non litigation area all they address merger acquisition drafting contract all notices opinions whereas litigation is specifically dealing with both international and domestic litigation so when i recruit a guy i i first see whether i have a vacancy with cadre and uh, what is my expectation from that uh, individual the best part of lnt is that we give one year complete uh, what you call it, uh, independence or um, give our freedom to the new guy that first to understand our business understand our culture and thereafter slowly we try to take uh, extract work from them so that is the advantage with the lnt whereas though the advantage wherever i in past work where the promoter driven company from the day one you have to deliver the your expectation is that uh, my management expectation you deliver from the day one 
So in nutshell, it depends on the size of the business, nature of the business, and the most important thing. But I intend to convey to all of you, whether you are in-house counsel or law firm, I mean, you must read the business, you must understand the business. Then you will be a great uh, lawyer. So friends, uh, in future, uh, most of the top uh, company like L N T, I T C, they will expect that you also know a little bit, uh, bit about the business. Thank you so much, Hemant ji. Uh, uh, Ms. Priyanka Valesha, your opening comments. What are the changes required in the department? What do? What are the qualities you look for when you hire new recruits? How has it changed over the last six, seven, ten years? And um, for example, what is the change in age profile? Is the change in diversity? You know, if the world is changing, um, again, Heman ji already talked very eloquently about specialization versus generalization. Uh, what's happening? Very rightly pointed out Mr. by Mr. Heman ji, that's uh, very critical to know the business. So I think the biggest change which has come across is like while we were hiring, you know, um, six years back, as you said, Mr. Anurag, uh, that six years back, it was more uh, particularly in reference to uh, whether the person is having the legal acumen or not. Right now, what is critical is whether that person is also having the urge to understand Business as to system. where the legal support is required to be put across into. Because till the time you understand that where the impact is, I don't think there is a purpose, right? So for you need to identify your purpose along with what are you trying to achieve? What is the impact of your legal support that you're providing to the business? So it's very, very critical while we are hiring in today's world. Uh, now the difference is that um, that might could, uh, uh, you know, there might be a difference in terms of what level are you hiring? You might be hiring at a you know, senior level or are you hiring at a fresher level? So for a fresher level, my advice would be, I personally look into whether the person is having the urge or the keen, you know, to learn more, right? And uh, along with the specialization, are they open for the new areas? Are they uh, looking up to understand the uh, more is because learning never ends and uh, I think we are also learning with the technological advancement but jumping into or thinking that automation is only the key I think that's not the right aspect of it it's not a silver bullet for sure so where we need the automation where we need to apply the automation how we are utilizing that to uh, you know um, support the business is the key right now. Thank you so much, Priyanka ji. Uh, let me go to Sumit. Sumit, again, you are a younger business relatively. It's a growing business. Um, there are lots of gray areas in policy. There are lots of emerging areas. Where should the data be? Where, sh where should the company be headquartered? Then you understand where I'm going. So hence, what is the kind of uh, team that you're building for the future? You rightly said, ours is a young organization and probably I represent the uh, new edge unicorn world, right? Where the young companies who come in probably last a decade or so, right? Heman sir mentioned he has a 39 year experience. Probably the aggregate uh, of everybody in my team would not have aggregated over 39 years of experience, right? So we are seeing a young India also emerging where a lot of young lawyers who are uh, eager to learn and come to in-house and to understand because one thing which has changed in last few years with all the foreign investment coming in India is that the earlier uh, and I made the transition having worked with top tier law firms for 14 years being partner at one of a tier law firm to move in-house uh, I was also doubtful because uh, when you're looking at uh, in-house department externally as a lawyer you, you make certain perception basis the people you're dealing with and uh, one thing is very clear that the team which I'm going to build from scratch uh, will have people who may not be individually rock stars but as a team you need to click right if you go out looking uh, that every talent has to be a super rock star right uh, it, that person has to be a right fit and has to understand what he or she is expected to do uh, one advantage companies like us is that the compensation, for example, that is no longer a factor when we look at any uh, top tier law firm, right? We we can match that salary, we can uh, give ESOPs, which are very lucrative, 
and uh, a real uh, money value in a company obviously last one year or so has been very different for the for the Not like startups word. world but uh, i see this is just a phase and uh, uh, just like we have seen that phase in last 15 years which has come twice uh, into an 8 9 and then again in 15 16 so this is just a part of the uh, curve where, and we'll get over it but the larger picture is that because the ability there is a immense ability on all the young well funded companies to attract good talent and also good esops which i have seen and i was a vc private equity lawyer and i have seen the kind of uh, liquidity people used to get even from legal department when used they used to participate in any uh, secondary fund uh, whenever there was a fundraise and they used to participate uh, selling their esops so that has become a very attractive tool to attract good talent uh, we get lot of good talents from law firms but what you need to see in an in house is that a uh, individual in a in a law firm a individual talent can perform and outshine and that person will be looked at will be given preference compared to any other law in the team right they will get that kind of leeway right uh, and i'm speaking from my personal experience when i was on the other side of the table uh, uh, in a in a department in a in house department you have to put the entire team together and they need to sync in well right and they need to work together uh, because the buck stops with you and the legal department i'm sure with him and sir uh, another panelist has really evolved over a period of last 10 years or so especially in last 5 years right and when you say evolve we'll come back to it. once we have mr gulati and mr kapoor making how is it different when you say it has evolved we'd get into the granularity of that but for now and let me bring in mr gulati for his opening comments yeah i think all what has been said is quite relevant uh, but one of the thing is that diversity is very important cultural fit is very important so people with diverse backgrounds they come from uh, and but they have not got very formal you know uh, trainings and you know their subject trainings or matter driven trainings or experience but cultural fit is missing so it's very important for a collaborative when somebody has to work in house it requires a lot of collaboration and collaboration is required across the spectrum of business where the in house team uh, you know lends hand to the business and gain knowledge from the business and at the same time you know drive the legal aspects of uh, the 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 requirements of the uh, uh, legal aspects have to be uh, you know strengthened so from that point of view it is very important that people come with a very open mind a b it's preferred that the in house councils should have actually worked and had the exposure of working in courts in their initial years because that really gives them the real picture of what how the law works and how the laws are interpreted how they have to be applied in the real time business Sumit, have you worked in a court i know you <laughs> that's so, as it is so as a transaction lawyer never but i think last one year has ensured at least for us to that i spend a lot of time uh inside a court room or in a siac uh, arbitration or delhi high court uh, i started as a in house lawyer and then made that transition i started with aditya bill group and the mesur prasanna who is a stalwart uh, who hired me uh, back in 2008 and uh, first year yes because with aditya bill group just like lnt you're a cognate and there a lot of litigations starting from medical negligence to different kind of employee disputes and i was running from mp to odisha and uh, all of those places as a young management training back then uh but yes once i made the transition because i think from a law firm uh uh when you are a corporate lawyer uh, obviously you don't get involved in the litigation because that's how law firms are structured right you will be part of a corporate team and when there's a dispute you will toss over the matter or dispute team from a relation you will be involved but the dispute Mr. team will be stepping in uh mr kapoor your opening comments you had heard all your colleagues about what are the needs of the business and hence what kind of legal department what's changing what has remained the same mr weber mr anubhav kapoor thank you anurag and uh, uh, i think we can, can we up his volume yes yes anubhav 
Yeah, thank you, Anurag, uh, and uh, thank you, panelists. I think uh, all had uh, extremely valid points. Uh, but I I just want to dwell on uh, a few points, which kind of are, are are the trends right now that we are seeing, which could influence materially the future of the uh, office of the general counsel or the as such the legal departments as such. Uh, I think the first trend that I see is that uh, in most of the uh, recent incidents or corporate frauds that have happened, um, we see uh, more and more owners being placed on the professionals who aided in the decision making. Right now, the CFOs, the company secretaries and uh, GCs are being uh, hauled up more and more or they are at least being more uh, uh, put in a more position of accountability. Uh, as we see the, and this is a trend which is growing strong and I see this uh, growing stronger in the future uh, with the regulators. I think with that, it may not be uh, surprising that uh, the GC will become a, or is, is already is, but it will find more uh, relevant uh, uh, ex uh, place in the, in the um, boardroom and it will also be classified as a KMP among other officers that we see. Right. So with that, I think uh, uh, the skill set that is required to now manage the uh, legal departments, I think is also go through material changes. Traditionally, I think GC, GC's office or legal office will always be a business enabler, but the business is transforming rapidly. Right. And the businesses will always want us to be uh, more cost efficient, more effective. Uh, me more transparent, more, more business enabler. And that trend is not going to change. It is always going to be uh, uh, tighter and tighter. And, and we will be uh, all the GC legal office uh, will always be required to walk that tight rope. And that probably will um, prompt the legal departments basically in terms of whether they want to be uh, 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 high on outsourcing or they want to kind of insource. Now, both the in both the options, technology is going to play a, a, a very, very important role because uh, in, uh, the techno the right now, traditionally, where we have functions like identifying, uh, extracting, uploading uh, these documents and data, this is all going to be technology driven. Again, uh, with open AI and artificial intelligence being maturing, I think extraction of documents and data is going to be automated. And this is true for in-house or law firms. Um, then the querying, organizing and sharing of data, right? Right now, a lot of queries are being asked for to GCs. I think that all is going to become more, more commodity, more, more technology driven. And also in terms of uh, the intervention of legal department is going to be more at the background uh, in the in. And when I say background, it is not that uh, the, the legal department is not present, but it is more of templatization workflows and systems that large corporates will deploy in order to kind of uh, have the legal function streamlined. Of course, uh, analysis, negotiations, large deals will uh, uh, remain with the forte of the uh, general counsels uh, or the legal personnel. And that I think with that skill set, I'm I'm what I'm seeing is that the composition of the legal department and the skill we hire is also going to be changed. Right. We have now uh, uh, more. Uh, I think the resources have to be much more uh, technology. Uh, they should have the knowledge of technology. They should be more uh, technology friendly. Se second, I think that the knowledge in terms of cyber security, data privacy, um, uh, money laundering, these are going to be uh, like kind of uh, industry agnostic. So I think the skill set that so that will influence the kind of training and the education that we impart and also the hiring patterns of the of the uh, uh, teams as well. And um, I think following that is also uh, the the entire uh, risk profile of the companies, I think. Uh, over the years, we have seen the third trend which we have seen is the uh, the risk uh, function is becoming larger and more relevant. I think this is going to be one of the important board uh, functions as well. And I think GCs will be kind of responsible in terms of uh, risk anticipation. I think uh, we will spend much more time rather than risk mitigation at this point of time to risk anticipation. 
uh, uh, so that we are business enablers. I think with that, um, I'll I'll just leave it there. Uh, uh, those are those are my thoughts in terms of how these trends are going to influence the future of the legal departments, and it is it is going to be a material change how I see it in next five to ten years. Thank you so much uh, for bringing some dimensions which are fresh when you spoke. Now also as uh, Sumit talked about his young company is very young. Of course, LND is a giant. It's been around for a while. Uh, so Hemant Kumar already said it depends upon what your size of organization is, what stage you are in. Uh, but for young lawyers, they have too much pressure. They have pressure from their bosses, the weight of expectation. And some of it is same in every profession, whether you're you know, salesperson, you're a marketer, you're a CFO, whatever. But in legal, uh, sometimes the events are beyond you, you know, so it is, and the reaction has to be, or the response has to be immediate. Uh, so it puts a lot of stress on young lawyers, okay, on the team members that you may have in your respective team. What are your tips uh, to young lawyers in terms of how to manage uh, their stress, uh, how to balance their lives, and uh, still learn and deliver? Emanji. It's a very interesting uh, topic and uh, I wanted to speak on it because on the same topic our Honorable Chief Justice of India uh, spoke to Harvard Law School in February. Today I will be a little blunt for the young lawyer. See when I joined the profession uh, there was no concept of CTC and many other factors. Joining and then was that like mall the house yeah. CTC <laughs> <laughs> and never expected that I must have my own vehicle, uh, four-wheeler, or my house, and this, that. That time, we, I used to, see, first I joined the State Bank of India. And in, in India, for the first time, in-house council was concept was introduced by State Bank of India. It was an all-India recruitment, like provisionally officer. So we joined in first batch. So uh, salary was 1,200 rupees provisionally officer salary. So friends, what I suggest that all stress is uh, not bad. It relates to your emotional uh, feeling, okay? But uh, when the stress reaches to the peak of the bell curve, then it is a problem. I tell you that uh, stress is the bottom and then you have panic and then fatigue. So I would suggest that if you take the job in a, in a very sportsman spirit, it will resolve all your problem. You cannot become a group GC in five years. Let us admit very frankly, it takes long. It's a process. What is happening current youngster? I find that two years they are with LNT and somebody has offered say 25,000. Please take in a proper way. I'm not abusing or suggesting anything wrong. 25,000 offered by some small company. They will resign, they will go. But what contribution, what learning you will have in LNT or company like LNT, that will be a great uh, asset for you. See, I take my own example. State Bank, NPPC, Cell, LN Mittal, Reliance, SR. So different varieties of things when I learned, then it has become, now I quote, uh, the region of stress, a beautifully suggested uh, by Chief Justice of India. Uh, I just, uh, the number one leading causes of mental health problem is the contradictory tenor of the legal profession. There is something about our profession that people take pride in its contradictory tenor. Looking, working hours, especially in uh, youngster, sleepless night, lack of exercise, financial worries, make the professional stressful. So my suggestion to all of you, and today actually I have circulated one video also to uh, Dr. Batra of uh, Steve, who was multimillionaire. And he said that uh, he died in 56 years of age, having, but he says that, what is this money? I'm not enjoying money, I'm in the hospital. So friends, uh, see, if you have some hobby, you spend your time on your hobby, make good friends. And the most important thing is, from the day one, you start connecting your colleagues. Connecting means 
networking say today the guy who joined my batchmate in state bank they are connected with me most of them have either become the high court judge or supreme court judge but they are connected so this is also very important third important thing is don't think that you are a only in house counsel you must also have a good rapport with uh, say if you are going to the court with advocate general solicitor general you just go and introduce you will learn many things from them the, nothing wrong going to the law secretary i tell you law secretary of the state government central government they appreciate if corporate uh, in house counsel comes and discuss all their problems all their uh, other issues so my this are the session that please keep everything a very in a in a lighter mood don't try to unnecessary uh, uh, create a stress for you because it's not a stress for you it's a stress for your family also if you are going from office with full of stress then uh, you won't enjoy in your family life so these are the few things i wanted to share with you thank you so much for bringing such an important aspect uh, ms walisha let me ask you um, you know i said if the businesses are changing if there's more diversity every part of the business do you see diversity and inclusion in the now legal department or we have a long way to go ah uh, well there is a change there's a shift in how the organizations are looking into the positions so i would say yes definitely uh, there's a lot of work which is required to be done towards the diversity and inclusion and we keep struggling towards it but yes there is a change and the organizations are considering this as a key you know so there is a shift just to add on to um, what uh, my colleague ms hemant said in reference to the lawyers right there are just two ads to i want to give it to the lawyers as well i think we have a lot to tell the young lawyers what they should be doing and how they should be doing definitely that's there there is a lot to learn from the experts but on the other hand i would also like to say that you know as um, as a in house counsel we also have some role to play to encourage them and to motivate them i think um, to motivate them enough to understand to make them understand as to what role they are playing in the organization and how they are benefiting the organization with the inputs that they give i think the second most important thing is to ensure that the flexibility you know to identify as to what are their core areas or what are their learning curve areas right so every person has one area where they are very comfortable they are very confident to lead across and there are certain areas which are the growth areas so as an in house counsel i think we have to identify for every recruit that we have like what are their you know key areas where they leap in and what are the key areas where we can help them to grow and for the young lawyers i would like to say this um, that you don't you not only required to look forward but it's very very important to look back as well identify what you did in the last year identify what you did in the last month if you were part of a litigation go through it prepare yourself so preparation preservance is the key for this profession if you are preparing yourself since we talked about the stress uh, uh in the profession believe me uh, stress is with everybody even an attorney general will be stressed for the matter which is coming up in the court it's all with the preparation that we go once we are in the court or whether we are sitting towards uh, you know answering the board questions it's the preparation behind that that lead us with the confidence to answer to this, those queries so stress is definitely there but how do you manage that stress is very very critical so i would like to wrap up with that so with uh, since you you are the youngest on the panel and your organization is also the youngest on the panel what are the changes you foresee in the next 3 years 5 years i'm not talking 10 20 years what is likely to change about in our legal department so what needs to change i think uh, at least that our organization is already driving some of those changes right uh, uh the legal department plays uh, a very very important role all of us uh, obviously admit and uh, 
subscribe to that view. Uh, as a GC, right from the time I joined two years ago, I've been part of every board meeting. Uh, and uh, we we have a seat on the table and we can we can uh, express our views with the investors, with the board members. And uh, from a governance point of view also, I think this is something again as a young organization, that's something which I have seen very closely in last two years at our own organization, that uh, governance has taken a very center seat of whatever you're doing in today's business. You may have an absolute great numbers in your business. Your business may be doing exceptionally well, but if you're not a well-governed company, uh, even for a private company, right? Uh, uh, probably a uh, few years ago, people used to say, oh, you have a listed company, you have a, a LODR obligation, you need to have the corporate governance norms as per the SEBI LODR. But even for private company, I think there is now an expectation that a company has to be well governed. There has to be uh, policies and governance, uh, a robust governance mechanism. And that's where the legal role, to your question, legal team uh, role becomes very critical. You cannot be a yes man uh, to the business, right? If you are here to make your business team happy, you are not doing your job properly, right? Obviously, you are a business enabler. That's great. You should. That's a given that you have to enable the business. But if you if you think you cannot stand up and say the right thing in a uh, in a closed door or to people when something as a lawyer, right? Ethics is taking uh, a very important uh, and this is something in last two years, right? And probably. Uh, I'll admit that uh, uh, at least our company has been at uh, that forefront, right? Where we are seeing that transition, we are driving uh, that. Uh, I said we have a five-year-old company. We already have an audit committee as a private company. We have two independent directors, uh, uh, which again, as a law, you don't need to. But uh, as a legal department and from a governance point of view, we felt that's very important. So uh, apart from technology and uh, the fact that lawyers have to in-house department has to adapt to uh, all the technologies which are coming and that's it. again these things will be industry agnostic every uh, uh, industry will have to see what kind of uh, uh, technology or automation works for them again it's not one size fit all solution uh, but uh, there are several areas where legal department is already making a lot of change but my advice to all the young lawyers and in, in-house uh, and this is a 30 under 30, so I want to keep the theme also to the young lawyers, is that uh, it's very important to have right work ethics. And uh, just to take on to what Himan sir was saying, uh, what is th there's no problem. In, in, this is a young India, right? And people want to have a good lifestyle. Probably uh, uh, even when I started. Uh, and a good hairstyle also. <laughs> you you can you can afford to that uh, to do that when you're on the other side probably that's something. <laughs> the I'd just like to add on uh, to uh, so I think the change is from legal administration to legal operations. I think so we need to understand because earlier it was uh, purely the legal administration, which is you know probably doing the, just the core legal work. Now the shift is heavily doing the legal operations as well, which means you have to be the part of the business. So I think that's a major, major shift. Thank you, Mr. Gulati and uh, yeah, I just, okay. One change what, uh, what I found in last 10 years is that uh, earlier we used to be treated as a service provider. Today we are a profit earning center. I want to just share how much contribution we have made in the kitty of the LNT in last seven years. But yeah, they have appreciated and accepted that legal in-house counsel are no more service provider. They are also profit earning center. These are the major changes. Thank you so much. When he says profit center, which means if there is a litigation, if the litigation went adverse, it would have meant a loss of, in their case, thousands of crores. And so hence- Profit to be able center to here means that dividend will also be shared with lawyers going forward, Good. which was not the case earlier. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Gulati, uh, your final comments in terms of while the legal departments are changing, what needs to still happen to be able to make it futuristic? So futuristic, two things have to be kept in mind. One is that the current status is the platform. And that does not mean the current practices or current 
uh, ways of doing or managing the legal function need to change. That doesn't need to because that golden rule remains there that you have set processes, systems, policies, etc. To govern the legal function is very important. That stays there. A physical mind or analytics that will stay there. Second is the integration of technology. And that's the way future is and where where we, we are currently talking about uh, chat GP and, uh, and artificial intelligence and all of this is enabler. So this is going to enable us to do certain things more efficiently. The other important thing is that the rudimentary work will not be required to be done by people. There, I think machines and art, uh, these systems and all technology is going to really help because the research work, the preparatory work, etc., will get automated. So the legal departments have to be ready uh, and futuristic ready in terms of adopting to those technologies, those uh, aspects of integrating themselves and to speed up the whole work environment is very important. Uh, Mr. Kapoor, your final comments. Uh, Anurag, I think it's a very interesting question and there are several dimensions to it. And I think uh, I'll, I'll begin with a few of them and then uh, see when I did law, what motivated me was the passion among the lawyers at that point of time. They were not there to win the cases. I think what motivated me was the thought leadership, the change. They were the change agents. They brought fresh ideas and fresh thinking to issues that were uh, uh, that were uh, the issues at that point of time. Right. I think uh, it is still the case. But I think now uh, one of the fundamental reasons of uh, the stress among law, uh, young lawyers, especially is that while I see a lot of energy and passion, but I think uh, they are in constant high stress because of the result orientation. I think one, maybe the clients are demanding more, uh, but the role of a lawyer is to best represent right the matter uh, based on its skills and uh, knowledge. Uh, I think the results is something that should be left to the jury, but obviously there is a negative stigma that is attached to uh, uh, the entire thinking if you do not win the cases or bring positive results. Uh, it 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 kind of affects your uh, image internally. I think that goes for in-house also, uh, and therefore uh, mm, uh, wa th there is a lot of stress in that. Obviously, lawyers also have long work hours. I think the situations they are facing is mm, uh, also stressful. But there are a number of opportunities I think for young lawyers that have emerged in the recent past also. Let me reflect on uh, uh, the COVID period, right? And uh, I think there were dis three distinct things, and that was the Black Swan event. We uh, it it broke the traditional norms and gave opportunities for fresh ideas to come in. I think three areas where legal profession got uh, materially affected was the rapid change in the court system, right? It it will quickly such switched into the uh, conferencing mode, the digitalization mode. Uh, petitions could be filed online, uh, hearings could be done. Uh, literally every court in the country was trying to do that during that period. I think in that period, uh, I heard a lot of people say that this is a great opportunity for the young lawyers because they were struggling less to face that change while the, the people who were older in the system, uh, more established, uh, uh, took a while to kind of move a switch because the entire tactics for argument and influencing the courts uh, materially changed. It, it, uh, uh, the, uh, I, I heard people saying that while you are face to face, there's an impression on the judge, there is a clout of the lawyer. I think in virtual world, all those things uh, 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 materially changed. So I think that was a great opportunity for the young lawyers to come in. I think the young lawyers also represented uh, the agility of the times that we are seeing and the uncertainty of the times that are about are, are, are what we are seeing in the business environment in the future because uh, these are the lawyers who kind of quickly changed their style of working they adapted more to the 
uh, work from home cultures, work from anywhere else culture, uh, and there were there are much more opportunities. They were quick to adapt, and I think change is going to be a constant in the future. Where where young lawyers uh, who are more technology savvy and more law savvy are going to be uh, benefited. The third trend what we are seeing is the increasing pressure to make business simple in the country, right? And of course, uh, 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 ease of doing business, decriminalization of uh, various laws. I think uh, there's a whole set of new laws that are coming into uh, force. We see in the labor code, it is still not notified, but the whole consumer action, we are seeing increasing penalties uh, under various uh, uh, laws. There are more laws actually that has to come right uh, in the future where I think those uh, the younger lawyers will be much more better suited or or more equipped to uh, kind of quickly move to that kind of a, a regulatory regime uh, which which basically the in-house councils uh, is that is the biggest role or or um, expectation. And, and expectation as well correct and and the third and the last is that economy as such is going for a change right uh, with the development of technology is one part, but the role of services in the overall economy will increase. And that is what we have seen the trend in UK and US as well in the development developed countries and India, uh, fortunately is moving very fast towards that uh, uh, a, a developed nation with, with the larger economy, with startups coming in, more and more people uh, coming into uh, or, or adopting business. Uh, as their uh, means of living. I think there is a huge opportunity for uh, the young lawyers to kind of get to that uh, wave. And uh, and as the services increase and as the technology increase, we will see more gaming industries. I think uh, uh, this Got is where... Uh, so so I, think, I think there is a huge opportunity that lies ahead for the young lawyers. So thank you so much. I think... Yeah, I want to end by asking. I believe that we all need to be reverse mentored. We need to learn new skills from people who are younger because they think differently. Forget appreciation of technology can happen. happen. But how do you inculcate ways, yeah. some of the good things that young people have? I think yeah. upskilling is very important. At all levels, people have to continuously move up and upskill it themselves. And that's how I think the future expects from all of us. So, Hemanji, how do you make sure, of course, what you learned in four decades, you know, the basics come in and you meet people and you have a team. And, but how do you make sure you learn new things? Yeah, let me tell you, again, it's depend on the size of the in-house council. If you have only three, four councils in your team, then all are stressed. They, it's very difficult to give a free hand to a young lawyer. The best part in LNT or a company like LNT we give at least one or two year complete freedom that you take decision. I mean, you suggest your new ideas, you do the research work. Uh, so young lawyer, youngster should be given freedom to speak. That is most important, I tell you. If uh, as a senior counsel, if you do not allow, I'd say this is not correct. That is not the way of dealing young lawyer. Give the freedom to speak. Whatever they is, uh, opine, you appreciate it, notwithstanding not legally valid, but appreciate it. And any good thing done by the young lawyer must be appreciated through mail and mark the copy. Just see the motivation part. Whenever I find that any young lawyer has given a beautiful opinion or even he has only a gratuity case, which is of 50,000, I always say good job work done, uh, excellent job done. So these are the motivating factor. And as a leader, I believe in that will encourage the young lawyer. Thank you so much. I know our time is up. If there's one or two questions, since we have the benefit of having such senior people on the panel, the gentleman there, tell us who you are, give us your name, where do you work, and ask a question. Am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm working with Cyril Amarts and Mangaldas. What's your name, Mr. Gupta? Utkarsh, Utkarsh Kumar. Oh, you're Utkarsh, yes. Yeah. I know you, Utkarsh. <laughs> sure. So uh, I think, uh, as Sumit mentioned, that typically a law firm setup is that we are moving into ultra specialization. Uh, in fact, maybe today a corporate team is also subdivided into fintech, labor, funds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And possibly, if I work in a firm like this for five, ten years, I may be just working on those specific practice area. 
uh, when we talk about in house and typically as a in house counsel you are required to work in multi sectors i mean you might be working on transaction um, you at some stage might be involved in our litigation you might be advising your business on labor on ip or any other sector right so as in house counsels while recruit while recruiting a a person who is say fight and down their career do you look at ultra specialization or you look, look at a more general profile and if you do look at a general profile uh, i mean do you think these law firm guys are fit for in house over a period of time he's looking for a job in a possibly in a, <laughs> possibly i'm just department. looking for the best solution Sumit, to get Sumit, to why don't you take that well i made the transition from uh, amar chandoli right uh, and i spent uh, almost a decade there and before that with azb so i've spent 14 years in uh, the tier one law firm as i was mentioning before making a transition uh, into a fintech right uh, into payments industry and financial services uh, for me until i made that transition the fintech or nbfc or financial services was a investment deal or a mini deal i was doing right so uh, and again uh, at least the law firm or people who are working in law firm and have dealt on uh, investment side will realize that your transaction document doesn't change much uh, depending on the sector you are dealing in right uh, you will still have those uh, standard stuff there and obviously some of the diligence findings may get factored in depending on which sector you are on your cp and cs so uh, everybody so that the talent pool essentially is going to come either from your uh, industry uh, other competitors and the in house department or from law firm now the fact of the matter as you rightly said uh, is that the law firm is a highly specialized uh, feel right uh, a transaction lawyer is going to do a deal in financial services one day in healthcare next day and so and so forth uh, but uh, uh, but law firms are also doing like fintech for example i'll speak for fintech to explain this and to take your uh, question is that we have a lot of firms who are focusing on fintech practice does that mean that a f- somebody who's practicing in a fintech will own- yes the natural ans- the first thing would be that yes he will be a great fit for a fintech or a financial service industry because he sees the entire Uh, uh breadth of the entire industry right so uh, that's there uh, when i am looking at some the uh, because i uh, try to put myself in the shoe when i made the transition i did not have the in depth understanding of how the financial services work other than the generalist approach when you are doing a transaction right but uh, if you have if you have a good technical skill right and a good analytical skill i don't think it takes a lot of time once you get into industry uh for a for a smart lawyer who's ready to put in those hours it's not very difficult right once you whichever sector you get in you may take 6 months 9 uh, months or a year to understand the nuances and because you already having some experience it helps right uh, uh, you will have some specialists also already working in the department whom you can work with it also depends on how much you are ready to uh, uh, unlearn and then learn again right uh, so it's a two way process uh, and then work with other people without putting any ego that probably you may be working with somebody who has spent 8 years in a in house and may not be that fancy coming from a tier one law firm right because this generally a law firm people uh, uh, have uh, at least uh, seen that they there is this some s- bit of an air when you're moving in house that oh i'm coming from a good law firm so i may know m- more than you right that kind of approach doesn't work right you have to come with an open mind and understand that people who are spending years in in house and i can tell you uh, they probably understand the product and the industry better than the law firm right because they have seen everything right uh, so uh, yes a law firm will come and give a great advice but it is on the in house department to actually practically implement it right you will people issue their memo and opinion and they'll move on but to actually practically implement it and to go to that uh, Uh, to the last level right uh, we sit with i sit with my cpo and cto to understand how the payment is flowing at the back end right how does it actually happen uh, uh, so the in depth understanding of a in house counsel in a particular industry i'll say is far better uh, and i'll stand by uh, that statement being a transactional lawyer myself for the majority period of my career uh, that once i uh, came in house i in last two years i realized that the understanding is phenomenal if you're ready to learn obviously uh so no specific it's just that if you're ready to learn right so i'm I, i'm not really maybe a person for for a financial services will have an, a certain advantage when i'm looking at that industry because that person understands this but it boils down to the uh, uh 
uh, how much uh, knowledge, general knowledge, whatever they have done, right, and whether they're willing to come and join and learn because it's it's a huge transition, right? Uh, working in a law firm and moving in house. Gulati sir, you wanted to say we let everyone's comment. Yeah. So the last point is that yes, there when you sit in the law uh, on the in the law firm, you're advising, but when you go on the other side of the bench then you see that how you implement that advice. So the difference is huge. Really thinking that it can work, it may not work. Understood. Evan ji. See, his question was that he is currently in a law firm and if he suppose switch over to in-house counsel, what is your expectation from uh, four or five years of experience? If I am sitting in the interview, A, for four or five years, I never sit in the interview. I send my colleagues. If I am there in the interview board, A, I am not influenced at all by your uh, uh, law university degree or by your brand of law firm. I am very clear about this. What I expect from youngster having three, four years of experience, when you are inter going before a company like LNT, I will see how honest you are. When I put up a question, I would try to just try to confuse me, then I don't appreciate, number one. You say, I don't know. I would, I would, I tell you, I will select you. Number two is, I would also see whether you have the hunger to further learn. And third important, suppose you do not address my query, I will expect whether you are asking me, sir, what, I don't know, but what is the answer? Can you just share your experience? So these are the four, five things. I never expect something extraordinary from Sri Damachand or ADB or NLU. A very simple, straightforward questions and answer. Honesty is most important. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka ji. And Anwar, you want to add to it and then we can wrap it up. A lot of young students will be very happy, uh, Heman ji, because I think there is a litigation which is going on wherein the young lawyers have put across this uh, issue wherein they want that uh, there should not be a classification that for a job you need to be from an NLU or from a particular law university. So they'll be very appreciative of your thoughts here. I think very rightly pointed out it's, it's like being authentic, whether you have the urge to learn or not is something which is very, very important. So it's not always uh, important whether you have the right answer across, but whether you have the right aptitude to apply the analogy across. So I think that's more important. So for the young lawyers, just one tip, I think focus more uh, in reference to uh, being genuine and not uh, focusing more on the brand right now. I think that would would make a difference. Thank you. Final point of view on both short. Sure, Anuragji. I think the only word I, or, or the phrase I want to add uh, to what my learner panelist has already spoken uh, is a, a solution oriented mindset, right? I think I my experience says my experience says that one of the uh, uh, topmost qualities of a successful in-house counsel is a solution oriented mindset, right? It's that's not the application of law. I've seen a lot of experts coming in with a lot of specialized knowledge, but they struggle to kind of marry the business proposition with the uh, legal concepts and find a solution. I think uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, this is a one quality uh, which is at most required uh, for people who are choosing uh, in-house uh, uh, counsel. While the question, I think my only remark is grass is greener on the other side. Uh, 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 we, I can I can argue both ways that we deal only with one companies, but at least the law firms deal with different companies and different facts every day. But uh, I think that's a that's a debate we can continue. But uh, but one of the uh, result orientation and solution minded approach is one of the assets uh, which GCs bring. Unlike a law firm person who is opining as he is just giving us the point of view on a legal point. But application in business environment is much tougher and it has much more repercussions and much more uh, variables. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Please give our panelists a big round of applause. I think uh, they made very deep uh, practical points which can be used 
to further your career. This is the second cohort of the 30 under 30. Uh, we had a jury process, which is very, very detailed and robust. Out of the 30 winners, 28 winners are coming themselves. One winner is being represented by somebody from the family, and one winner is virtually or not coming, right? So that's the kind of last chief uh, guest is, I am repeating Shri Ridhuraj Avastiji, who to a legal person, I don't think we have to, he's the chairman of the law commission. We have uh, Ms. Chaturvedi as our guest of honor, Mr. Shashank Bajpayee as our guest of honor, and uh, the jury members will be uh, giving away the awards. So be there in the evening, it's from 4.15 onwards till 6 p.m. And uh, we're doing this conference primarily to contextualize what's happening in this space for the benefit of the applicants that applied last year and this year in the 30 and the 30. At some stage in the next two, three months, we'll also do a conference where we bring both the cohorts together of the 30 that won last year to the 30 that, and bring them and talk to them about what they are doing. We also have the GC100 coming up. We have the Global Legal Leader Summit coming up. These are in our law school rankings coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned. Uh, God bless you. Please give our panelists a big round of applause. Mr. Hemant Kumar, Ms. Priyanka Walesha, Mr. Sumit Singh, Mr. Sanjay Gulati, and Mr. Anbhav Kapoor. Thank you so much for being so forthcoming with your thoughts and making a difference with the point of view that you brought to the discussion. Thank you.